Hi, Claudia here from Create with Claudia, and today I'm going to show you how to make something very near and dear to my heart. Basically, this is a men's handkerchief wall quilt. Um, my father passed away recently, and he was always with a handkerchief. If you needed a handkerchief, you asked him, he always had one in his pocket. Even near the end when he was in nursing and bedridden, uh, he always had a handkerchief on the side of his bed on the, on the nightstand. Um, it was just something, you know, my brother and I still laugh about. Um, when we were kids, if we had something dirty on our face, out would come his handkerchief and he'd wet it and then wipe our face. And, and <laughs> it's just a sort of a funny thing uh, with, my, with my family. Um, but it's also just a really, really nice memory at this point. Um, so this is a hard video for me to make, but I wanted to do it. It's actually part of my sort of trying to he my healing process. And it's actually a really good looking quilt, it turned out. I like it better than I thought I would, um, and I will definitely be hanging this soon. This is a uh, wall quilt. It's 28 inches finished. It's 28 inches square. It's made up of 49, four and a half, 49 squares. You cut each square four and a half inches, um, and then I just uh, put binding on it, and I actually added a hanging sleeve on the back, and I quilted it with my machine, and I'll show you that later. I'll, I'll discuss it later. I'm not going to show you that, but... Um, Anyway, uh, handkerchiefs are little, men's handkerchiefs are a little tricky, even, and women's handkerchiefs are. They're really thin, and these are all 100% cotton. He always had cotton handkerchiefs, uh, which he liked. So let me show you how to prepare the handkerchiefs, because it's not just cutting them up and sewing them. You need to stabilize them first. You need some interfacing on the back. So let's get started. Like I said, he had loads and loads of handkerchiefs, and they had these really pretty patterns on them. They're just simple, Plaids. He had all kinds of colors. It was an easy gift to get him. Um, here's a blue one. You can see um, some of them, uh, they have some stains on them and things, and you can just cut that out. It's not a big deal. Um, I think I got like 30 handkerchiefs from him, so you have plenty for this. For this project, if you're making the wall hanging, the 28 by 28 wall hanging, you're going to need a minimum of six handkerchiefs that are 15 to 16 inches square. Uh, depending on the size you have, that's a pretty standard size for these cotton, these plaid cotton ones. You can find them online, or of course, if you hit inherited some or uh, took, saved some from your loved one. Um, so it really depends a lot on the size of your handkerchief, how many you're going to need. But if your handkerchief is about 15 by, this one's probably 15 by about 16 inches. Um, that's how I found most of his were. Um, you're going to need minimum of six of them because you need 49 squares all together. Um, and I cut up uh, quite a few more just because I love the variety of all the different uh, plaids that he had. So this is a blue one, and here's a brown one. Um, you can see it's a little bit smaller. So each one's a little bit different. Um, so you are going to have to, when you're trimming your interfacing, you're going to have to keep that in mind. There is a front and a back to a handkerchief, and I'll show you maybe on this blue one. There's a very fine Sort of the edge was flipped over and so it's like a very fine edge. When you're cutting, you want to cut that off because that'll be more bulk to sew. This is already going to be bulky enough to sew. So what you're going to do is you, you also need interfacing. And I use this 100% cotton interfacing. It's Pilon SF101. Let me make sure I, it's called Shape Flex. Yeah. Pilon SF101 Shape It's iron-on fusible woven interfacing. You can use other interfacing as well. Um, I just, and I've never used this product before now, it's cotton on one side and then on the other, you'll, it's sort of a rubbery texture which just has the, the, the glue on it. I found this was so lightweight and nice and really pliable. Um, I saw this in the store and I said right away this was perfect for this. Again, other in interfacing will work. Fusible interfacing, let me correct that. However, you want to make sure it's nice and thin. Don't use a real thick interfacing because this is you have a lot of bulk to these blocks once you're once you're once the interfacing is on them. So the next thing you're gonna do is take a handkerchief, lay it down with the wrong side facing up, and you're gonna wash. Before I, I forgot to add this, you're gonna wash these and press them. Um, as well as you can. Again, handkerchiefs, they're so thin and the, the cotton is so fine. 
um, that they're kind of hard to press. And you don't want to use starch because I'm honestly not sure how that would react with the adhesive for the for the, um, the fusible interfacing. Um, so I can't really speak to that. Um, I didn't put any, so I just washed them and dried them and pressed them. And then you're going to line up that uh, this is the blue side and that would be facing the wrong side and you're going to want to line it up just in that little border. You don't want to waste any of this uh, interfacing. It will not be a perfect square and as you can see down here, this one, the handkerchief's actually I, a little bit shorter on this end. So what I would do is take this piece of interfacing and cut it up, however, maybe about an inch. It's not an exact science. Um, and then what you would do, once you've lined it up as, as well as you like, again, with this edge cut off so that it would be within, you know, um, within the handkerchief so it's not sticking out so it doesn't, when you iron it, it doesn't glue to the ironing board. Um, you're going to take it over to your iron and press it as per the directions on the interfacing you're using. So I'm actually not going to show you that part uh, because it all depends on the interfacing you decide to use. But here is one that I've already done. Here's the front side. You can see this one's an old handkerchief that's been well worn. Um, and there it is with the interfacing on the back. Nice, uh, nice uh, adhesive there. It's nice and smooth and flat. Um, and it's still very pliable and very soft and easy to use. So then you want to cut it. And you're going to get nine squares. Hopefully you're going to get nine squares out of this. And let me get my rotary cutter and my ruler. And we're going to cut. And you're going to cut. I always start on one edge. Try to line it up. You're not going to have perfect lines. This, uh, the handkerchiefs are pretty wavy, and when you press them, they may not always be straight, but I think that adds to the real charm of this quilt. Um, so anyway, you're going to start and start off, get your edge, your clean edge, right here. Hoping you can see that. And you're going to do that. Just going to put that aside. Whoops. Okay. And then you're going to start your four and a half inch strips. And I like this ruler, it has a little half inch starting point. Okay, there's your four and a half. And I can just sort of eyeball it here a little bit. I always double check my measurements because. I don't want to waste these handkerchiefs. Um, that would be a shame. You can also do this a strip by strip. I just like doing the whole square. It makes it easier. There's another four and a half. And hopefully it comes out. Yep, this one's just right. Some you'll find there's a bigger uh, four inch. You'll see when I flip it over to do the um, actual cut out the squares, you'll see there'll be a longer edge. So that's four and a half. And you can discard all of that. And then you're gonna rotate your cutting board. And you're gonna start on this edge. And you're just gonna, again, cut off as close to that edge to that border as possible so you don't have that, because that is a pain to sew through. In fact, that one, let's see. Cut. When I first started doing this, I cut two of them wrong and I didn't get as many squares as I thought I would out of them. And that bummed me out because I hate wasting these handkerchiefs. And then I'm just going to cut the one square just so you can see. Watch your fingers when you're doing this. Um, so there you go, there's a square. This one's a little different. There's another, another corner, and you would continue and do that so that you would get nine squares out of each handkerchief. And uh, each one, again, would be a little different. So then what you're going to do, once you have all the squares cut out, is the fun part, at least to me it is. Whoops, dropped one. You're going to start laying them out in the pattern that you like. And 
if you have if you're lucky enough to have a lot like me you get to play with them for a long time so I'm just gonna do a few here uh, let's see he had all kinds of plants he had solids I will throw in a solid from time to time it sort of gets you, your eye rests on that and sort of maybe softens up the piece a little bit um, let's see what else you can see he had all kinds of fun patterns any which way I love that green one. That's my favorite one. I don't have much of that left. I use a lot of that in the other in the in the quilt I've already made. I like that blue. And why don't we just try that one for now? So there you can see there's a pattern. Um, this is of course small. I'm not going to show you the whole thing. For the quilt that I'm that I showed you, it's seven squares across by seven squares down. Um, but for today, I'm just going to show you how to how to put this together. It's it is really once you've the biggest pain actually is preparing the handkerchiefs. Once you're done with that, it's a simple putting together quilt like any other quilt. So now once you're done, you like your pattern, you're gonna sew the blocks together. And again, because it's a small uh, wall hanging, you can do this in no time. So you're gonna take your two pieces, uh, let's say this is row one, you're gonna right size together, and then you're gonna sew down the one edge using your quarter inch seam. I do use a little bit longer stitch like this is pretty thick to sew through because essentially you have four layers. They are very thin though, so it's not as hard as I thought it might be actually a little bit harder to sew through. Um, but anyway, let me show you how you sew that down. Make sure my machine's ready. Oops. Um, okay. And I do chain piecing when I do this. I mean, you can almost chain piece the whole quilt top and then sew it all together. You can hear, I would also use a new sharp needle when you're doing this because it is, um, it is a little bit thicker. So there you have two blocks sewn together, two squares sewn together. And once you're done or however you press, it all depends on how some people press them one at a time, some people, Some people just sew the whole row together and then press them. Uh, but you can see you're going to have a thicker seam here. And when you press, you will find that even no matter how hard you, how hard you press, it's not going to lay perfectly fat, flat. That is okay. Um, it gets sewn down depending on how you quilt it. Um, and you will have some bulk there on the seams. Um, but because you're using thin interfacing and the handkerchiefs are so thin, it's really not as bad as you think it would be. So bottom line is you would continue doing this until you piece together the whole quilt top. And there you have your quilt. And I quilted this. I am, I, the one thing I do not recommend if you want is to hand quilt this. You are, you would be quilting, hand quilting basically through three layers of, excuse me, four layers. The backing, the batting, the interfacing, and then of course the, the handkerchief. And that would be pretty tough on your hands. Um, but more power to you if you can do that, that'd be great. Um, I actually found, I did just did a simple straight stitch on my machine. I do not have a long, long arm machine. Um, I don't have a fancy machine either. I just quilted it straight down. And I actually think it's really effect effective with this uh, plaid pattern. Um, I think it really shows it off. And the only thing I would uh, just note here, because the, the handkerchiefs are so thin, you can see where they've sort of shifted a teeny bit when you're quilting. So it almost has a little bit of a teeny tiny scallop. Some it's more pronounced than others. You can sort of see there. Um, does not bother me. I think it actually adds to it a little bit, adds a little bit of movement. Um, but anyway, bottom line is you can quilt this however you would like. I also use a very thin batting. I, and I use 100% cotton batting on this. Uh, this would not be, I don't think it would be good with a thicker batting. It's just, that's my personal preference and that's up to you. I used a regular quilting 100% cotton fabric for the binding. I chose this green because I thought it would look nice, sort of pull out that green in that handkerchief, and it was sort of a nice, uh, just a nice uh, edge to it. I thought it would uh, added to it. I also added a sleeve. Again, that's totally personal preference, um, but I like to hang my quilts on quilt racks, and so I use a, I need a sleeve. And there you have it. Uh, I'm gonna make one for my mother, one for my brother. Uh, just to keep the memories alive. I'm going to cherish this forever and I will definitely hang it um, 
and uh, it's just a really special memento and it's a special way to remember a loved one. So if you have handkerchiefs from your dad or your grandpa, um, even maybe hankies, ladies handkerchiefs with the florals, that would be pretty too. Um, but it's just a wonderful remembrance of him and um, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you give it a try and I really appreciate you watching. Thanks so much.